If you really want to protect your users and your company from ransomware, then you want to set up Microsoft 365 security, assuming that you're having your email hosted at Office 365, also known as Microsoft 365. Now check out this website, go to security.microsoft.com, as you see in the URL at the top, and log in with your administrator username and password, which is going to be the same one you use to get into uh, office.com. And you would normally click on the admin link. But you can just go directly to security.microsoft.com. And then what you want to do is you want to click on policies and rules. And then you want to click on threat policies. And what this does is it shows you the major threats that you can protect yourself from for your company under policies. Here they are right here. These other ones are also good as well. You can check out things like the tenant allow block list, DKIM, et cetera, that kind of thing. But these are the ones right here that will protect your company from ransomware by receiving emails. And emails, of course, are one of the biggest ways that uh, people are going to get ransomware. So let's check out anti-phishing. Now, by default, you may see some anti-phishing rules, but they're set super low. So what you want to do is you want to add in a new anti-phishing rule. And you can see here, I've added in a custom anti-phishing. I'll just go ahead and create a new one for you. And I'll just call this one new custom rule. Click next. Now you have the options of users, groups, and domains. So if you want this to affect everyone uh, in your tenant, in your Office 365 setup, then just choose domains and type in the name of your domain that you, on which you receive email. So I'll just type in email. And I've got a couple different domains here. So if you have more than one, be sure to choose both. And now if you want to exclude specific people, you can, but I don't recommend that. Click Next. Now we see the phishing email threshold. So you can see it's set to one, which is standard. You can go more aggressive the more you go to the right. The most aggressive, you can try that if you want, see if it takes stuff that, that shouldn't be uh, taken and sends it off uh, to your junk mail. But uh, I like to be somewhere down here around three. Three is where I've found that most people get the best success. But I definitely recommend that you test it all out. Now, here's some other things. You can see some things are checked by default, but the majority of things are not. Here's one of the great things I like here. Enable impersonation protection. So let's say you've got specific people in your organization that are the CEO, all the different C-level executive people, the head of IT. You can set up impersonation protection to keep those people from being impersonated up to 60 users. And that will keep those people from, from being impersonated, sending, hey, wire uh, $5 million to the this mail is a uh, uh, bank account. Well, you can stop that from happening right here. You put in the uh, the users by uh, clicking on the plus or clicking on the name, and then you go ahead and type those users in, and then those people cannot be impersonated by somebody else. That's a great one right there. I'm going to uncheck that one just because I don't want to type in any names at this point, but you'll, you're going to want to do that. Next one is enable domains to protect. So, of course, you'll want to uh, protect your in. Uh, include domains that I own, view domains, and then you can click on the domains that you own. And I've gone ahead, I've got these two domains that I use a lot right here. So you want to make sure that you type in these custom domains. And it will also enable impersonation protection for those internal and external domains. Now we want to add trusted senders and domains. So if you've got people that you know keep getting sent off to junk mail, but you don't want them to, then you can go in and add in specific senders. So you can add in an external email address right here, type that in, and then they will be trusted. You won't have to worry about them getting sent off to spam. Then you've got enable mailbox intelligence. And you'll definitely want to leave that checked because it uses artificial intelligence to check the patterns and things like that. This is really how you can find whether or not someone's trying to send you a phishing message pretending to be somebody else. And I do recommend you check the box for enable intelligence for impersonation protection, which adds additional uh, protection. And of course, spoof intelligence um, as well. So we'll click next. Now you've got the actions. What do you want to do with that? Well, you can do nothing, or you can redirect message to another email address, move it to junk mail, quarantine the message, deliver it, de uh, delete the message, or don't do anything. What most people like nowadays is to have it sent to the junk mail. So that way you can determine whether or not uh, you know this is an email that should have been pulled. However, uh, it's not the most recommended way of doing it. Quarantining is the best way. And then the administrator can go into 
the quarantine and check out whether or not that's something that can be released. That's the safest way. But I understand if you want to do the junk mail. And then uh, also you've got the spoofing where someone's pretend pretending to be somebody they're not. You can do uh, the junk mail or quarantine as well. So go ahead and choose whichever one makes the most sense for you. And you also have the option there where it shows a uh, question mark for unauthenticated senders for spoof. And you can see under the information, it helps users distinguish if the senders are actually who they say they are. So I like to go ahead and leave that checked. And then once you have it set the way you want it, click Submit. And now that policy is done. And there's my new custom rule. It says that it is on and running. I go back to threat policies, and now we do the same thing with anti-spam. You go and you create a new policy. I've gone ahead and created a custom policy, but it's the same kind of thing. It's going to walk you through all the different ways to protect yourself, and you're going to decide whether or not that you're going to have that email sent to junk or whether you're going to have that sent uh, to quarantine. So I'll go ahead and put in a new one here and click Next. And once again, I'm going to put in my two domains and click next and here's the bulk email so if you're getting email from the constant contact those kinds of places you can decide whether or not you want to block that so the higher the number the more bulk email will be delivered it's set to seven i recommend you bring that down to a four or a five but it really depends on how much junk is getting through then you've got this is a really great place here to block uh, people from getting out to ransomware image links to remote websites block that so basically you click on an image it takes you to another site of course it will block a lot of uh, shopping sites and things like that but they they can the users can just go ahead and type that in manually they can go to amazon or wherever it is that you want uh, they want to go you don't need to have that done through an email and you've got the numeric IPs uh, addresses in URLs. If uh, anyone's sending you a URL to an IP address instead of a name, you want to block that. And you've got to another port, absolutely block that. Link to biz or info sites, yep, a lot of spam comes from there. Mark as spam empty messages. And then all these other things, turn them all on and then test to see whether or not users start complaining they're not getting the messages they want and then find out what they are based on what's in their junk mail or in the quarantine and then you can turn whatever it is that you want back on again and if you need to and uh, that should make everybody happy of course unless uh, it causes a security issue here's another interesting thing you can you can uh, block specific messages so you can go in here and type in specific uh, languages i should say so go ahead and type in whatever language you think it is that you don't want to get or just say hey you know what i don't want to get any email from specific countries so you can put in russia and china here if you want or whatever languages you want so the majority of uh, hack attempts of course are coming from russia and china there's also a lot coming from ukraine poland and other Eastern European countries. Uh, some of those are state-sponsored actors and, and some uh, are just individuals or small groups. And then you can also put in a BCC message if you want and send any of these messages to the IT administrator so they know what it is you're getting. Or you can add this X header text, which tells you that uh, if you see this X header in, in an email, it means that it applied to a specific rule, then that's why it's there. So that's a good way to know uh, whether or not your particular rule is being applied properly. And here's where you decide where you want these messages to go. They can go to junk mail. They can do a lot of other things. Like I said, a lot of times people want this stuff to go to junk mail. Phishing, of course, quarantine, high confidence phishing, absolutely quarantine. Uh, and then you've got bulk move to junk mail. So all these things are really good rules here. I'm going to click next and create, but you can customize that if you'd like. And now that's done. You can do the same with anti-malware as well. I'm not going to go through that one because it's pretty much the same. Just go ahead and, and pick uh, and choose your settings. What I like about safe attachments and safe links is uh, if you choose to set up safe attachments and safe, safe links, you can set it up. So uh, once again, you create the policy and it works pretty much the same way, but I'll show you the one that I've done already. Uh, you can set it up so any types of links that come into an email, you can determine whether or not you think that they should get delivered to the user based on the information. So for instance, uh, you've got uh, all these different options here to protect yourself. I'll just click on edit protection settings so that way you can go in and turn certain things on or off. Um, so this way you can protect yourself against uh, potentially unsafe links that could come in. And then you've got the same thing with safe attachments. You can also determine 
uh, what types of attachments uh, you're going to allow to come into your email and what you want to do with those attachments. Uh, you can do nothing. You can just monitor it. Uh, what I recommend if, is you choose replace. What replace does is it replaces the attachment with an email saying, hey, it looks like you got a virus. I have uh, gone ahead and sent the message anyway, but um, I've stripped out the, the virus from the email. And that's a really great protection for you that you can use. Back in the threat policies, uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to take a look at some of these, these other options as well. But um, what I like to do is go back to policies and rules and go to an alert policy. And what alert policies do for you is uh, they can alert you to when some of those policies that you just created uh, for the threat protection uh, have been triggered. And you can see whether your users are all getting attacked by a lot of different places or if it's uh, just every once in a while, who it is that they're attacking, you know, all these different types of things. So these policies, you can go in and set it up and, uh, you know, go ahead and have that information sent to you if needed. I've done a comprehensive course on this in Pluralsight, Microsoft 365 uh, Threat Protection. And just go ahead and search under my name. You can see it. And then you can take a look and see how to do all these different things. Uh, so if you have a subscription, you can just go ahead and get in. I believe you can do a 30-day free subscription as well. And I go through these uh, one at a time in great detail if you need more detail than what you just saw here. Keep yourself safe from hackers and ransomware, and I'm sure that you'll all be much better off and protected.